What's going on, folks? My next guest is Baraka James. He is the founder and president of Modern American Shooting and Firearms. What's going on, man? No, nah, good afternoon. I'm doing well, Kalyan. How are you today? Doing pretty good. Doing pretty good. Been a long day, but nonetheless, you know, I've been uh, I've been out there with my Twitter fingers, kind of just going at it with some folks, particular You're the comedians. Man, I know. Oh, man. At least I like to make myself seem that way sometimes, right? <laughs> <laughs> so talk to me, man, for the people that don't know. What is Modern American Shooting and Firearms? <clears throat> okay, so uh, MASF is a uh, organization that my wife and I founded about five and a half years ago. Uh -huh. uh, we were originally uh, Mid-Atlantic Shooting and Firearms. We changed, changed the name to Modern American Shooting and Firearms. And uh, we're a 501c3 charity, nonprofit organization dedicated to gun education, um, basically you know, some of the things that we say is gun ownership is your right, safety education, and mindset and training is your responsibility as a citizen. And we want to evangelize to get more people to go out there and train and stop just being gun collectors. Uh -huh. You know, a lot of people, they have all these guns in the safe, they go to the range, they shoot a bunch, and go home, spend three hours cleaning and put it back in the safe. They don't conceal and carry, they don't, they're not proactive with gun legislations. We want to get people more active and uh, exercise their second amendment right and realize they can protect themselves. Yeah, you're, you're asking people to take on more responsibility. Exactly. People don't like that. <laughs> I know, yeah. and that's the biggest thing. I mean, we, we tell people constantly, you and only you are responsible for your own life and safety. No one else. I mean, it's your responsibility. You've got to take that. And uh, the reason why I drive that home so much is uh, the, the whole reason I founded this organization was um, it started in tragedy when I was a kid. I was about 38 days old, and uh, my father was at the time a rookie DC special police officer. Mm -hmm. And uh, in the neighborhood, he had a car at 23 and an elderly uh, neighbor of his wanted to go to the grocery store. He didn't have a car. So my father volunteered to drive him there. Um, the gentleman got to the checkout counter, forgot his wallet. So my dad said, hey, I'll run back to your house and get it. Drives back to the guy's house and he goes and the door's kind of cracked open. So my dad goes in, calls out to his wife. There's no answer. Wow. So my dad, my dad goes in a little further and little did my dad know, he walked in the middle of a home invasion. There were eight thugs <clears throat> inside. Eight? Yeah, eight. Rob, robbing the place. Makes me reconsider um, my 43 carrying decisions. <laughs> I'm, I'm with you. Exactly. And you know, it's funny that you say that. Um, well, I'll just tell, tell you that segue. I carry a 17. Uh -huh. So that's 18. That's See, everybody's 18. carrying 17s now. Sarah, before uh -huh, you carry like 17. Sarah, I know. You carry a 17. What then, look, I, I got you know, the Terran tactical extension on there. So this is 40 rounds, 18 and 22. So, and, <laughs> hey, but I'm telling you why. So, my, again, my dad was attacked by eight of them. I mean, he fought as hard as he could, Koleon. He was a uh, martial artist, uh, five years, uh, Chung Do Kwan Taekwondo, but it, it was no to yeah. no avail. They beat him down, put him on his knees, they uh, and shot him in the back of the head with 32 caliber uh, revolver and killed Jesus him. Jesus Christ. So my mom, she uh, had a nervous breakdown. She burned all my father's belongings and, uh, you know, was kind of distant for a while. She was mentally just broken down. Yeah. And so, you know, I grew up watching a lot of TV and I watched a lot of Westerns, man. Growing up, I, I've seen every John Wayne flick that, a hundred times over. And one of the things I noticed was the power of the gun. You know, you always see in cowboy movies, if the, a big gang rides in, if a guy's good with a gun, he's, he's an equal yeah. guy. You know, he can take down a lot of people. And then I remember hearing the famous, you know, quote by Samuel Colt, God made men, but I created, uh, God created men, but I made them all equal. And it made so much sense and it resonated with me because I was like, look, if my dad had had a gun and the proper training and the proper mindset, A, he would have left and possibly gone to a payphone. There was no cell phones in 1972. Mm -hmm. Called for help. B, if he had taken maybe a shoot house class and was concealing carrying, he would have had the object, you know, drop on those guys. And I don't want anyone else to have to grow up like I did because of gun tragedy. So I want everybody to understand that it is your personal responsibility to protect yourself, your family, your loved ones. We have the Second Amendment as our God-given right. Go out, get a gun, train, and learn how to use it. No. Yeah, I mean, it's... I really, I, did, I like, I didn't expect a story to end the way it did um, mm. when you were telling it to me. And, and, you know, I think people also underestimate, because, you know, there are going to be a lot of people that say, well, there were eight guys in the house. What is one guy with a gun going to do? Um, the do one thing, pe people underestimate the lack of desire that people have for wanting to be shot. You're right. Um, and in many ways, it really does shift the, the, the power curve in, sen in the sense of, you know, a lot of guys are just like, look, I'm not going to sit here. I'm not going to shoot it out. I'm out of here. You know, right. that that could have easily happened. Um, so I, I think you make an incredible point to to in terms of bringing up the, the, the equal playing field that that the gun provides for a lot of people. 
That's um, right. And for ages, they keep pushing this narrative of, oh, you only carry a gun because you're a P or, you know, you're scared or, you know, or you, you're incapable of defending yourself. I got these hands, man, which is fine, mm -hmm. which is fine. But right. let, let's let's be honest with about something like and I've heard somebody say this to me before. Show me a guy that plays by the rules and I show you a person I can I can beat. That's right. Um, that's right. And that's a game that these guys play when we're dealing that's with true. criminals and people who are out there to commit harm to other people. 100 percent, man. And the thing that we try to get people to understand <laughs> through proper education is, you know, a lot of people are like, well, you know, we I, we coined a term turning um, gun collectors and the gunfighters and the left and the anti-gun love to use that against me. And I say, no, listen to me very carefully. A gun collector is a person that goes to the range, shoots with no agenda, puts their gun away. When a gunfighter, just like you learn how to fight with your body yep. in martial arts, you have to learn to fight with a gun to protect yourself and your family. That's the connotation I'm trying to explain to you. It's just like anything else. It's a tool to be used to defend your life and the lives of your loved ones. And that's it. Bottom yep. line, what's the first thing they teach us, Coleon? I've seen you taking a lot of classes from some of the same instructors. If you can run, run. Find an exit. Don't engage. Call law enforcement. Let them. But if you're backed into a corner, then you have to be able to say who's going home. You are the bad guy. You're going home. You want to go home to your family. You want to go home to the people that love and care about you, not the other way around. So we're just trying to get people educated. And also that will stop a lot of accidents in the home. You know, safety starts in the home with children. Yep. If you start getting educated and you take that education home to your children, then guess what? It makes our society a better place in general. No, absolutely. I can't begin to tell you how many times I've been with people who know I carry a firearm and we'll, we'll, I'll see a seedy situation and I'm like, oh, I'm out of here. I don't want to be here. Um, exactly. You know, and, and they'll literally look at me. They're like, but you have a gun. Right. It's like the whole they point don't is understand. I, I don't want to have to use it, though. That's exactly. the point. <laughs> like, exactly. like, you know, like it, it's I, I have the gun in the event that I have no other choice. Right. But, but the antis, what do they paint? They paint a this cowboy mentality that we go around with our heads high yeah. and our chest out and we're looking for a fight and a problem. No, yeah. we're the first ones to leave. I, to be honest <laughs> with you, I, I tell people all the time I become I become more of a P now with yeah. a gun on me. Than That's I right. did when I didn't have one on me. I become incredibly passive um, right. just because I understand the power that I hold when I do carry a gun on me. And because, like I said, I don't I don't want it to get to that level. Um, you know, I, I, I remove myself from situations where I think it can get to that point. So imagine if you had tons of people walking around with that mentality. Exactly. Exactly. A polite, our armed society is a polite society. It's yeah. so true. Yeah. And that's the bottom line. And people don't understand that. I tell people all the time that are anti gun, I say, you know, if there's no guns around, what's to prevent criminals? It actually entices crime because perceived weakness brings on aggression. If there's people casing people's houses and they say, you know what, I don't think we should rob these neighborhood. I know <laughs> this place, a lot of people carry guns. I don't want to get killed. Yeah. But if there's no guns and they're like, hey, Let's go in there. These guys aren't gonna, they don't have anything to defend themselves. We're out in the middle of nowhere. The cops will never get here. Why not? It's open opportunity. You know, it's. I, I think other people undervalue one the number of guns that are already out, and two that there is no magic button that we push and make all the guns disappear. That's I, right. I, I, I think a lot of people spend so much time with their heads in the sand. I included sometimes um, mm -hmm. because it's easy to get lulled into the consistency of life. You go. Mm -hmm. I, 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 so many people have told me they're like, I, I haven't needed a gun up until this point. It takes the power of God in me not to look at them and say, that is the dumbest thing I've ever heard in my life. It's yep, the dumbest don't. thing. You don't, well, you, you don't have know to, until you need it. Right. It, exactly. And, 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 but this is, you, this is legitimately used as a basis for why they say that you don't need a gun. Like, I haven't needed it to this point. Right. Oh, really? But look, I, I know. And that's what people don't understand. I tell people all the time. And, and, you know, it's kind of a joke to get them to lighten up a little bit. I'm like, you know. I don't, I carry a credit card in my pocket. I like to pay with cash a lot. I don't want to necessarily use credit, but if I need to swipe my credit card, I swipe my credit card. Yeah. If I carry my gun, because if I need to give someone the bees, AKA bullets, then I'll take out my gun. <laughs> but it's a tool. You don't use, need it unless you need it. But yeah, like, I again, thought you were talking about Beyonce's life? fan base at one point. <laughs> <laughs> Indeed. <laughs> So, I mean, again, we're just trying to evangelize training. So that's why and security and safety and education and mindset. I mean, right mindset is everything. Having the, I mean, you can only learn proper safety through good education. You have to go to well-vetted trainers. I've seen a lot of the guys you've trained with. I constantly train. I tell people all the time, if you go out and you seek a vetted instructor, teacher, and trainer, you will always be better than everyone else around you because you know what to do in a situation. And we talk about bad situations in class. Whereas 
because everyone else is going to be in shock, jaw dropping when something bad happens, most likely get killed because they don't even know what to do because they haven't contemplated that thought yeah. cycle. No, absolutely. And I want to I say one thing before we go. For sure. Any, for every, any and everyone out there who is anti-gun, quasi-anti-gun, questionable, bi-curious, whatever you want to call it. At the end of the day, for those people running around saying, oh, we need more people to be trained. We, need, we want training. We want people to be. We don't just want anybody with a gun. You should be big up in groups like this. Because if anything, these are the types of people who you want armed in your country. But that's not what happens. When we hear groups like this, we don't hear people on the other side saying, well, well, let's focus on these groups that are doing these things to get people well trained and, and, and make people more responsible with firearms. We don't see that. What we see is a bunch of villainization of firearms and saying all the people who own guns are bad, so we got to get rid of them. And then they only use the whole notion of, well, we need people to be more trained, more trained as an excuse to not seem so overbearing or or, or basically in hiding their true intentions. So I agree. So there you go. I'm, I'm, I'm glad that organizations like yours exist. So for those Thank of you, you who don't know, Modern American Shooting and Firearms, get out there and train. Thank you. MASF.co, not .com, .co. <laughs> <laughs> awesome, Thank man. Thank you so much, Julian. Absolutely, man. It. We got to catch up. All right. Well, call me. We'll do. Email me. <laughs> Absolutely. You know I'm ter terrible at getting back. I know. Right. I know. It's all right. Jen was telling me the same thing before the show. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I'm a horrible person. I, know, I hear her laughing back there. But I, <laughs> she, she knows. It's okay. You're a busy guy. It's not a problem. Uh, I try, man. I try. But no, but really appreciate it, man. No, thank you so much for your time and your help. I appreciate the time today. All right. Take care. When we come back, we're going to check out some new guns from Ruger. <laughs> 